What's going on YouTube fam? Mikey here shooting another high adventure video. So I had a subscriber tell me that I should try to cook up a crawdad mac and cheese and that recipe sounds really intriguing. So we are down here on the river today. I am long boarding to one of my favorite spots to catch some crawdads. We're gonna go pull some crawdads out of the river and we're gonna go throw this recipe down and give it a try. I don't even know if it's gonna taste good or not but you asked for it so we're gonna try it. Oh no, what's this? What's this? Should I do it? I feel like I have to. I gotta return nature back to its natural form. We did it. Oh, now we did it. All right, so this is one of my favorite spots. We're gonna kind of start towards the top of the bridge and then slowly work our way down river. A lot of good pockets to work here. Let's get in, it's hot. Back into the icy river we go. Two things I noticed right when I first get it. Number one, the water is higher because it's definitely murkier than normal. And number two, I see some rocks suspiciously looking like they've been flipped over. So I start to wonder, maybe I'm not the only one who enjoys hunting crawdads along this stretch. But we keep flipping over rocks like we do and eventually, sure enough, like this one, bingo! Find us a little mud bug, crawdad, crawfish, whatever you like to call them. You'll see on this one though, as we get a little closer look, under the tail, there's some eggs there. That's a female, so we'll let her go so we can continue to enjoy hunting crawdads for years to come in this river. One of the things that I noticed too is that I had to go a little bit deeper along this stretch of the bank to find more crawdads because it looked like somebody had pillaged the shallow areas. You can see right here, water's a lot darker. It was just made it a little more difficult to hunt this stretch. You could see me floating away there. So I decided to hop out of the water. So I decided to move to another pocket right on the other side of the bridge, just a little bit down river, back into the water. Not quite as tough of current along this side. And boom, I'm rewarded immediately with a nice plump crawdad. You can see there's a nice claw on that one. Here are a couple of them. Stick it out under a couple of rocks. Probably, I don't know, just down there shooting the breeze. I don't know what would crawdads talk about. Uh, swapping manly stories, I don't know. They're just decent sized craws, I, that's all I can tell you. Look, another one right there. Love that Look good looking orangish red color. Really easy to, to uh, find them on the bottom when they've got that color going on. And so I'm just diving down. Again, I, I still have to go down probably in about six or seven feet. You see a couple of them there. I get the bigger of the two. But I'm in about probably, like I said, about six feet, seven feet of water. Uh, find a quarter there. So basically just paid for my trip. Baby crawdad. I don't know. Is there anything you can buy for a quarter these days? I don't think so. I, I used to be able to go buy airheads when I'd go to the city pool. I could buy one airhead for a quarter, but I digress. Another big crawdad down there looking good. I could see another one here. Just plucking them up off the bottom. Starting to come out a little bit more. The last couple of days it had been like triple digits outside. In fact, the day I went out on this day, it was 105. So plenty warm. There's three quarters of a spoon. All I need to do is add a treble hook to that. And that'll actually be a nice little spoon as long as it's not too rusted. Finding a lot of these starting to peek out from underneath the rocks. A little bit easier to find instead of having to always flip over boulders. But another good looking reddish orange one there. Big size to these. In fact, we'll measure some of these up here uh, when we get out of the water. So stay tuned for that. Good looking one. Don't let the claws get you because that that will hurt at that size definitely they hurt anyway even at a small size but bigger size like that I can't imagine the uh, pinching force that they have so I was able to grab this guy right behind the back of the head basically like behind the ears of a crawdad I don't think crawdads have ears maybe not maybe they do maybe crawdads do have ears I don't know another one right there fill in the bag really an excellent day of hunting once again this place didn't look like it had been pillaged by anybody, so I was there, virgin ground. Nice looking bag of crawdads, great day in the river. All right, we got a nice bag of crawfish, crawdads, whatever you like to call them. There are some really nice size ones in there too. Look at that bad boy. 
We're gonna measure one of the biggest ones up and see what kind of size we have. I'm really curious to see what the length is on these guys. We're definitely gonna be getting claw and tail meat out of a lot of these. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got one escaping. I got one escaping. Got him. Yeah, almost. All right, we are back at the bed of my truck. Now, I believe I've identified the largest crawdad in the group. I think he's this guy right here, so we're gonna go ahead and take him. I've got my Sportnir cooler here. Shout out to Sportnir. We're gonna measure him on the top of this cooler. So the body, uh, the body's tickling five inches. Spread out, fully spread out, look at that. Six and a half inches right there. That is a really nice size crawdad. That's awesome. All right, we got the gas hooked up here. All you need is this small propane tank. It's really, really nice. This whole thing comes with all these attachments here, as you guys can see. Got all kinds of ladles and stuff here. This is only actually the second time I've used this, but I highly recommend getting one. I'll have a link in the description below if you guys want one. There we go, just fires right up like that. So the first step in this process is to boil some water up. Drop some fresh water in there. Let's put the lid on, that'll help that water heat up faster. Let's see if this water's boiling yet. Oh yeah, there's a good craw hot tub right there. All right, my friends, time to go for a nice soak in the hot tub, in the crawdad hot tub. Now this water is so hot, it's boiling, literally. So it kills them instantly. So it's the most humane way really to kill a crawdad besides like bashing them over the head with a rock, I guess, but that, will spoil the meat if I'm not mistaken, if you do something like that. And last but not least, definitely not least, there we go. You know, I forgot to count how many I had. Probably about 30 would be my guess. Now we're gonna place the lid right back on. Let those cook for about five, six minutes. Now I'm pretty confident up to this point, um, but normally when I make mac and cheese, I usually have like Chef Kraft or Chef Betty Crocker with a lot of resources around me in the kitchen. Um, I have never made mac and cheese like this. Just like, I mean, I'm in the middle of a park on the tail bed of my truck. So we're kind of winging it. I mean, I have a general idea on how I think this is gonna go down, um, but there's probably gonna be definitely room for improvement. So if you guys have better ideas or have some different recipes for me, I'm all for it. Comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. But you're gonna have to give me a little grace today because this is crawdad mac and cheese for the very first time on my channel. So we'll just, we're all in this together, basically. <laughs> Let's see how our craws are looking. Oh yeah. Now I did put some salt in the water as well, just to kind of give, actually I don't know what that does. Somebody told me put salt in the water. So I just kind of blindly followed. That says a lot about me, I guess, but there you go. Somebody explain to me why we put salt in water. Is it flavor of the meat? Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but we did it. So hopefully that's not detrimental to the craws, but that is just a piggy wiggy. That might've been the biggest one of the day. These guys are done because I don't want to cook them fully. Let's go ahead and pull these off. Now all we have to do is let these cool down and then we can peel them. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is grating some cheese. Yes, I brought a cheese grater out here with me because I don't skimp. We have some medium cheddar and some mozzarella, and I'm just totally gonna eyeball this. I'm thinking mozzarella would go better with the crawdad, so we're gonna do about half and half, I think, and just start with that and see where it takes us. There's a goodly sum right there. Now, the one thing I am having to do a little bit is I'm having to pare all this down because all the recipes I saw that I was kind of looking at were like made for eight people, 10 people, an army. Um, so <laughs> I've just gotta like try to Make this for me, basically, and maybe a little bit to bring home. So the fastest way to peel one of these crawdads is just take the body and the tail, twist it like that, boom, tail comes right off. Now there's some kind of yellow junk right there that I like to just kind of peel out right there. And a lot of people will get onto me for not purging the crawdads, but for whatever reason here in Idaho, you don't have to. They're not a really muddy flavor. In fact, that water is super fresh that we're pulling them out of. So they don't have a muddy flavor at all. So no need to purge, at least here in Idaho, that we found. Take that mud vein out. Some people are finicky about the mud vein. I am not because, I don't know, I'm just not. Now like check this guy out. I've already taken the tail off, but look at those big, big meaty claws. I just take that, 
peel that guy off. A lot of times you can just crack that. Whoa, a lot of juice there. Just kind of peel away that shell. Now look at that. That's just going to pop right out. Watch. Boom. Look at that. Definitely don't want that to go to waste. Now we've got our heat back on. I'm going to go ahead and add some Kerrygold Irish butter. Let that melt down. We'll go ahead and finish cooking those crawdads in this butter, little butter sauce we got going on here. Next, what I want to do is just add a little bit of garlic powder over everything, as well as some parsley flakes. And then to kind of offset the cheese, I'm going to add some black pepper. Whole black pepper. We're just going to crack it right over these crawdads. It's going to give the crawdads a little bit of a punch in the midst of all that cheese. Just like that. Just kind of move that around a little bit in the butter. So we've basically got like black peppered crawdad that's going to go in with that mac and cheese. So now we will start on the mac and cheese portion. I've got a little burner set up off to the side here. Now, if I'm doing this correctly, I need to add some butter to this. I'd rather have too much butter than not enough, right? Now I'm supposed to add some flour. There's three teaspoons. So now we're just gonna break it down to like a teaspoon. I'm supposed to stir that in with the butter. All right, next, we're supposed to add some milk and I have some whole milk here. Now this could be a little bit tough because I'm supposed to just kind of I think I just gotta eyeball this. But it looks decent. All right, that's looking pretty good. Next, we're supposed to add some water, so we're gonna get real fancy. Just add some from the squirt bottle. I think that looks about right. I'm also gonna go ahead and add some garlic powder to this, as well as some onion powder, and a little mustard powder. Continually mixing. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a curveball in here a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add some parsley to this as well. Whoa, 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 okay. Chill out on the parsley there. Now for the final piece, I have some large elbows of macaroni. Now this is where I'm just gonna put out enough, kind of for me, I believe. There we go. I think that looks about right. All right, so quick update while I'm sitting here stirring endlessly. I went ahead and added a little bit more milk, butter, and water just because it seemed like I was losing a lot of my soupy texture and it didn't, and I was afraid the noodles weren't going to cook. So hopefully that doesn't ruin the dish, um, but I had to get something in there for those noodles to cook in. Maybe I didn't add enough. Maybe it's okay that I added it late in the game. We're all gonna find out. Maybe somebody's sitting at home right now going, no. Oh. All right, we're gonna add first the cheddar. I don't know, just sprinkle it in, sprinkle dingle. Let's go ahead and mix, stir, stir, stir. And I'm guessing that's what's gonna give us the thickness we want because it's still kind of runny. More cheese, yes, the more the merrier. I gotta hurry up and do this though because I don't want to lose my heat. And then I got like half melted cheese in here. Oh yeah, it's looking nice and cheesy. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and serve up some mac and cheese in a bowl here with this fancy little wood spoon that I got with one of my cooking sets. Now we're just gonna take some of that peppered crawdad and I think we're just gonna kind of ladle it right over the top. Just like that. So there's enough for where you get a little bit of crawdad in each bite. Boom, there you have it guys. Crawdad mac and cheese. All right, YouTube fam, look at that. I went ahead and just served it all up because I am starving, especially after swimming in that river. Let's say a quick prayer and then we'll get to eat. All right. Yo, first I'm gonna just try one of these crawdad tails by themselves, kind of the black pepper crawdad tail here. If I see my camera will zoom in on that. Look at that delectable goodness. Mm. Crawdads are a lot of work. Oh, but so worth it. Here we go. Looks cheesy enough. That is some super thick mac and cheese. I definitely was not gonna skimp on the cheese. Good grief. Mmm, that's like lip smacking. Cheesy good. Got a big chunk of crawdad and cheese in there. The wind started to whip up. Classic Idaho. So I put a little salt in the mac and cheese itself. But other than that, it's just the cheese. And then the crawdad is basically bringing the other kick to the table here. I think what you could do with this to add even more flavoring is cook your crawdads in your sauce 
and then go ahead and just cook the mac and cheese with the crawdad sauce like the crawdads and everything i think you'd get a lot of that um like the juices from the crawdad a lot of the flavoring from the crawdad into the mac and cheese as well because i'm almost feeling like i wish i had about double the amount of crawdad in here that's three tails of a crawdad finished off with some mac and cheese oh, perfect on a summer day YouTube fam, what a delicious afternoon. That was a fantastic recipe. Mad props to the subscriber who suggested that. I forgot who it was because it was a while back, but hit me up in the comments below. I'll definitely show you some love. You guys definitely have to give it a try at home yourself. I highly, highly recommend it. The only thing I regret is I wish I had had more crawdad tail meat to add to the mac and cheese. Otherwise, it was fantastic. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the recipe. As always, I will see you in the next one.